So cyanosis and how cyanosis is defined? Well, it's defined in a very general way. And the definition is that it's the bluish discoloration of skin or mucous membranes. That's it. And there are more causes of this appearance, the bluish appearance of the skin. And basically what you should understand, that's the definition. So anytime the skin is bluish, you can say it's cyanotic. But from the pathophysiological point of view and the, the cause that really matters to us, and it's the most common one, is that this bluish appearance is due to combination of dark blood and how this dark blood flows through the superficial layers of skin and mucous membranes. And this combination makes a bluish appearance. And what matters to us the most is the cause of this dark appearance of the blood. The blood is really dark. And the thing that makes the blood dark are increased levels of deoxygenated hemoglobin, or in other words, reduced hemoglobin. And there's a cutoff. And the concentration that makes the blood dark is 50 grams per liter or more of deoxygenated hemoglobin. So every time deoxygenated hemoglobin reaches 50 grams per liter or goes even above this level, the blood will be really dark. So basically, if in any part of the body there's in total more than 50 grams per liter of deoxygenated hemoglobin, the tissue will look bluish. That's it. That's what you should think of. If everywhere in the body there's more than 50 grams of deoxygenated hemoglobin, everything's going to be bluish in your body. Okay? Everything. Because we only care about the deoxygenated hemoglobin. What this means? It means that this is very dependent on the level of hemoglobin. How much hemoglobin you have. And how much of it is deoxygenated. Okay? So naturally, if you're going to have lots of lots of hemoglobin, the probability that 50 grams of it is going to be deoxygenated and more it's higher. But if you're going to have anemia, is there a chance you're going to have 50 grams of it? No. Okay. Because maybe you can have like severe anemia. You're going to have 80 grams of all hemoglobin per liter. And to have 50 and more of it, the oxygen is, is impossible in a way. So remember, people with anemia will be white. They won't be cyanotic at all. And people with polyglobulia or polycythemia, they will be very likely cyanotic, very easily cyanotic. Okay? Although they may be, you know, like if you have lots of hemoglobin, you should be feeling pretty well because it's like to be on EPO, like cyclists, you know, you're able to run the stairs much faster because the cardiovascular system doesn't have to work as much because in one liter you have 10 or 20 percent more of oxygen than normally so the, the the muscles are like very satisfied because delivery is great okay that's why there is a big business with EPO like uh, you know like in competition because you cannot compare someone with increased uh, levels of hemoglobin without okay yeah of course, there's a risk. There's a risk of thrombus uh, formation. Also, the the blood is more thicker, so it's harder for the heart to pump. Like uh, it's more oil than 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 water, etc., etc. But uh, yeah, 
slightly higher uh, levels of hemoglobin, you know, like really improve your muscle work. Okay. Yeah. So that's the thing you should really realize. If he's anemic, there's basically no chance he's going to be cyanotic. If he's polyglobulic for whatever the reason, it's very easy to be to look cyanotic. Although he doesn't have to like, he, he won't be dysmic at all. Only because he has maybe polyglobulia. Okay. Yeah. So remember, this is only, it's only about deoxygenated hemoglobin. And really, 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 really severe anemias, they can have like 50 grams per liter of, of hemoglobin itself. So it's impossible to have 50 grams of hemoglobin without oxygen. Okay. So this is in general cyanosis. Okay. So 50 grams per liter anywhere locally or centrally, if, if the blood over there in this tissue has more than 50 grams, the tissue is going to be bluish. It doesn't matter if it's a one finger or the whole hand or, or the whole body. Okay. And what is important to divide the cyanosis on central one and peripheral one. Okay. And central is means nothing else that the blood that comes out of the lungs is already cyanotic or comes out of the heart or left heart. Okay. It's cyanotic already. And if the blood is already cyanotic, it means that everything centrally already is cyanotic. And when will you check this? You will tell them, open the mouth and you see the tongue. And if the tongue is bluish, you know, it's central cyanosis. Or you check the mucous membranes. If they're bluish, it's a central cyanosis. And that's it. It's central cyanosis and you don't care about the rest. If there are no changes of the perfusion of the periphery, the periphery is going to be bluish as well. So central cyanosis means the central parts are bluish. And if, if there is no massive vasoconstriction in the periphery, the periphery is going to be bluish as well, of course, because the blood is already bluish, like originally the, the, that gets into aorta, it's bluish. Okay. And there's no way how it can get oxygenated before it returns to lungs again. So that's central cyanosis. This and remember tongue, mucous membranes. Okay. And then you have a peripheral one. And peripheral cyanosis means that the blood that gets out of the heart, left heart, is fine. Looks normal. Normal levels of... Uh, Normally low levels of deoxygenated hemoglobin. The, the blood is oxygenated. But because the flow locally is slower somewhere because of some obstruction, compression or whatever. That the blood cannot get out of the tissue if there is a, for example, thrombosis of the deep vein thrombosis. The blood stays longer in the tissue locally. And that's why the cells have more time to take oxygen and there's going to be build up of deoxygenated hemoglobin and the leg, which where there is um, venostasis, it's going to be bluish. Okay. Yeah. So basically you have to fulfill that the arterial blood gets to the tissue, but blood goes slower through the tissue. If you would block fully, if there would be arterial occlusion, the blood wouldn't get into the tissue and the, the leg would be white. So, so, so the blood has to get there, maybe slowly, but it gets there and it turns cyanotic as it goes through the tissue. Okay. And it could be locally or what? It could be in general. And that means when the cardiac output decreases. So a local, local venostasis or or decreased cardiac output because this, you know, the, the blood is oxygenated that gets out of the heart, but when it goes slower through the tissues everywhere, the person is bluish everywhere. But the central parts are okay. So tongue in, in this type of cyanosis is pink, is fine, it's, it has normal color. Tongue and mucous membranes are normal. But the extremities are bluish. 
okay? Or lips. Bluish lips means rather peripheral cyanosis, okay? It's skin. Now, watch out. There is a vasoconstriction, local vasoconstriction, okay? That's why if you're cold and whatever, you know, you, you know how it is with lips. They get bluish, okay? So, again, you care only about tongue and over here it is cyanotic and over here you always ask them to open mouth and if, if tongue and mucous mucous membranes and if they're normal then you know it's peripheral cyanosis okay and one more thing there's a trick with earlobe okay if it's blue let's say it's blue in cyanosis and then you have to Take it in your hand and touch it and try to warm it up. And if it's central cyanosis, it will stay bluish. But if it would be through some local vasoconstriction, whatever, as you warm it up, it's going to turn into normal color. Okay, there is a trick. So you got the idea what is central, what is peripheral cyanosis. Watch out. You cannot say that cause of peripheral cyanosis is a central one. No, don't say that. You have a central one and you have peripheral and don't mix them, okay? And why this is so important? Because it tells you where is the problem. Because if it's central cyanosis, you know there's a problem in the air or with the control of ventilation or with diffusion or with lungs or whatever. If there's a peripheral cyanosis everywhere, you know it's a problem of circulation, okay? Cardiac output. So let's switch to the table. And look at the table. So hypoxic hypoxia, there's going to be cyanosis, obviously, because uh, the blood is not oxygenated enough. And it's going to be which one? Central or peripheral one? Obviously, it's central cyanosis. Okay. What about anemic hypoxia? Will there be cyanosis? No. What about ischemic? Yes, there will be, but very likely there's a high probability there's going to be, but peripheral cyanosis. And with the histotoxic, well, no, you're not consuming oxygen, so of course, no. Yeah? Okay, so in ischemic hypoxia, you're having uh, peripheral cyanosis. In hypoxic hypoxia, you're having central cyanosis. Okay, and now, as I promised, we're going to do the mismatch. That's very important for you to understand. And both of the mismatches, of course, go under hypoxic hypoxia. Hypoxia, okay. And... We got two extremes in lungs and normally, you know, the lungs are very well uh, controlled in terms of their, let's say, oxygenation of the alveoli and a perfusion of the alveoli. So basically the rule is if the alveolus is well oxygenated, it should be also well perfused. And if it's not well oxygenated, there should be vasoconstriction to this alveoli. Healthy lungs keep this with reflexes. Okay. And basically, they beautifully control what alveoles should be fully perfused and which one shouldn't be, okay? But in case you have something with lungs, you have some disease over there, and it could be locally, and, uh, you know, it could be one lobe, it could be part of the lungs or whole lungs, unfortunately. But basically, you have this mismatch. So there's something wrong with the control, with this auto-control of the flow, Okay. And you have two extremes. One of them is that if this is a, if this will be a alveolus, okay, and this would be a vessel that goes around it, yeah. So one of them is that there could be a blockage of the flow and still the ventilation is okay. So over here, ventilation is okay and, and flow is decreased. And the other extreme is that 
that here's a blockage and flow continues okay yeah flow is fine what would you call the the one on the left well actually what is increased by this what is increased it's the dead space yeah you are you see there could be pulmonary embolism or whatever and the dead space because this is not oxygenated it's like uh, alveoles that it's not working it's ventilated it's not perfused so it's a increase of dead space on the other hand if the alveoles is perfused but it's not ventilated the blood goes just through the lungs or through this part of the lungs but it's not getting oxygenated so it's nothing else than a right to left shunt so this increases the right to left shunt okay and both of these are the ventilation perfusion mismatches and you can find them in many diseases and as i said if there's something with lungs, if you're having pneumonia, this can happen over here as well. With uh, chronic bronchitis, there's typically ventilation perfusion mismatch, okay, etc., etc. So both of these will typically cause hypoxic hypoxia, okay. So remember, ventilation perfusion mismatch means. Hypoxic hypoxia. Good. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.